You know, every now and then, a massive and grand classic will get a sequel. Be it good, be it bad, terrible, or anything in between. And yet, sometimes, sometimes, despite a film being the best film it could be, when it gets a sequel so terrible, but in a sense, becomes so fascinating that some even consider that sequel more fascinating than the original classic. Has it truly been a success that was attained, or is it a failure upon which its creator has learned grown to fear it? Scenes of the Fathers are not a real thing for movies, Trova. Anyway, welcome to the second, uh, you know, gift for uh, the celebration of my birthday along our 10th anniversary. If you're watching this uh, from the different playlists, that's because, you know, we're doing it that kind of way. But uh, for intents and purposes, this is fulfilling a promise that uh, that you suggested that we should have done when we commented on the first movie two years ago by the time we was recording. As in, one of the many, many cash grab, you know, sequel direct to video sequels that were done to Don Blue properties. In this case, the secret of Nim 2 team me to the fucking rescue. Okay, okay, okay. Not... Now, to be fair, I know some people may be thinking, wait. A story about Timothy Brisby, that kid who had little, if any, role in the original? What blasphemy? Well, to be fair, to be fair, the books that the Nim movies are based off of, in that regard, the sequel actually does focus on Timothy. Uh, technically, it's called Rascal and the Rats of Nim. But the main mouse protagonist in that book is actually Timothy Brisby. I so. do not remember when the sequel books were actually released, but this movie was done in the tail end of the 90s, not in the magical year of 1997, which, as we do know, discovering more and more, it has a shitload of bad movies. No, this was 1998, a year after. But still, don't let me that, you know... Three days you before into... Christmas. Don't Merry let Merry Christmas! Movie... Yeah. This should have been a Christmas pick then. Um, don't <laughs> let this fool you into, you know, the fact that this might, uh, you know, be good. Because, no, this, this again, when it comes to Don Bluth uh, property sequels, the one that you can genuinely think good are things that you can count on one hand. And one I mean, of them is, and one of them is Bartok the Magnificent anyway, so you know, your options are very limited. I'm just gonna I say mean, this, the... this is a contender for quite possibly the worst sequel to a Don Bluth sequel. And to give credit to the man, he is often not involved in most of the sequels to his no, The only one was Bartok the Magnificent. Yeah. And even then, it will, it's more like playing safe than actually, you know, being on par with his predecessor. But we're not here for that. We're here for Timmy to the rescue. So again, more than 10 years, almost 15, I, I think, you know, uh, than the original, we get this direct-to-video sequel where only a handful of the voice actor reprised, and Miss Brisby doesn't really talk that much, if not at all, because of the unfortunate thing that happened to the original voice actress, and we should instead protect the, you know, the action towards her child. And as Jova said, you know, because of what the books did, there is indeed potential to do this. So let's see I how mean, we ruin that, shall we? Yeah. I mean, sure, the... why not? I mean, I mean, does the story of this movie even have anything to do with the books? Well, okay. I do not it... know that. Okay, but... it has Apparently a... not. It has a slight connection in that it focuses on Timothy reconnecting with the rats of Nim in Foreign Valley. Um, and that there is apparently a plot to destroy the rats colony? Other than that, no. Oh, and oh... Oh, and to answer your question, Tio, the sequel, well, the first book sequel came out in 1986, and the second and final book sequel came out in 1990. So ideally, there should be a source of material to which this, uh, you know, should take place upon. But again, regardless of that, uh, since already the first movie was not really 100% a straightforward adaptation because of its magical elements, let's try to put that angle aside and see how this fares as a movie on its own, shall we? Start yes. before the black screen of two seconds, roughly, that is before the classic MGM logo. In three, two, one, click. I can't believe I mean, it's remember, actually been was... two years since we I commented on the I had the misfortune of seeing this on TV. 
Well, this uh, this was, oh, remember, this wow. came out in 1998. This was back when direct to video Disney sequels were at an all time high in popularity. They were, and other companies were starting to try to also, uh, you know, get in on that new trend. Did you at any point change the channel? Hey guys, look the no. secret of Nim. Hey secret of Nim. Whoa, the CGI. Look. So, you know, if oh, right. so guys, guess what? Now you get a, a, a nice recap of the first movie to remind you of how much better it looks than the first than this one. Tio, if there's any consolation. Uh, back in the 2000s, Cartoon Network would do this marathon of random movies on Sundays. Mm. They they had to land before time sequels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, and, 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 and nobody at Cartoon Network fought. Maybe we should actually air the original as well. No. Oh wait, they, uh, I'm pretty sure the they did air the. I'm pretty sure they did air the original a few times. But pay attention, folks, because not too late into the movie, we're about to get our first problem. Yes, blue also blue. poor um. Poor uh, Peter McNichol doing the narration here. Peter McNichol, you mean? Oh yeah, is he actually returning from the original? No, I uh, think he wasn't no, the no, no, no. Uh, Only a handful of voice actors like Justin, uh, Mr. Uh, the other older rat. Well, that's why I'm. Well, well, that's why I asked because we're listening to Justin's voice right now. Also, to answer your question, Shiri. Oh, wait, no, this bit. Not profit. No, he, no, he didn't. Is, no, he does. No, he did not. That's not what he said in the first. Wow, well, they really start by lying to you. Yep, <laughs> we're in for a wow. treat. I know they said it was like that, what so it's obviously it? true. Also, papyrus for the font of your title. What the fuck are you doing? Well, it, 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 at least it's, it's not got... Comic Sans. What it is what, what people's issues comic sense? I'll have a little time, Dad. It yeah, makes Tio cry. <laughs> hey, it's like in Matrix Revolutions, uh, where Neo's like, oh, the architect told me that if I don't return to the source, Zion will be destroyed tonight. Uh, no, he didn't say anything of the sort, actually. <laughs> also, <laughs> also, Shiri, to answer your question, technically no, but uh, for on a different note, uh, the uh, Balto 2, which I actually got to see on TV, actually genuinely caused me physical neck pain yeah. because i had to stand up to watch the tv with the my neck also but... um, don't you um also um another um curious um uh well won't be that's actually an omission um in that in that poor mrs brisby gets no mention of what she did in the last movie she's just yeah. oh she's jonathan's widow it's probably not a good sign when the first thing you realize about the sequel is that the people who made it clearly haven't actually watched that movie. But they have footage from the original, so they must have watched some section of it. And yet they completely misrepresent what Nicodemus said. It boggles the mind. It's like it's like the people who made Highlander 2, where they rip off certain scenes. Oh, those parts of the Wait. first movie, remember? Wait, hold on. He was running, and, he, and it's like, oh, they said a cheese in a trap, but they didn't. The, they didn't try, well, continuity is overrated, Dutch. But it's you know? just like, wouldn't it be better if he's like, ooh, cheese, and fell into a trap instead of just running? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Look behind him. I love this bit. Are you ready for another contradiction? Wait, what? Um... When did this happen? When? Hold on, hold on, guys. Okay, guys, 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 let me recap. So in the opening, they talk about a prophecy that Nicodemus said about how a son of Jonathan Brisby would do it. They never specified it was Timothy. So not only have they broken continuity with this previous movie, they've broken continuity within their own movie less than five minutes into the damn thing. Brilliant. It's a good. It's a, so basically, we already arrived at one conclusion. The scriptwriters don't give are either making this up as they go along, or they just plain don't give a shit. Also, <laughs> uh, I was mistaken. Uh, Justin's voice actor didn't return. That's actually William H Macy playing him this time. Yeah, William H Macy. I don't think anybody returned, did they? Ah, uh, let me Dom see. Louise, um, yeah. oh no, Don DeLuise. Oh, oh yeah, okay. so I, think, I, I think it's only Don DeLuise, though. Um, let me see. Point. No, uh, the the older rat. I forgot the name. Of the cabbie. Oh right. So. I right, think this right. was actually his last role before he passed away. Oh god. <laughs> this poor, poor man. Speaking right. of... Uh... This yeah, feels like hey, a Dom. Sunday school. This, this has the budget of a Sunday school movie. You know, Dom, 
There is such a thing as saying no to a script. You realize that, right? Like, Dom Dom. Was he involved in this? Dom DeLuise was like John Candy. Like, remember, he, he was too good for this world, so he could tell, not say tell, no. Tell, tell, remember, he was in the fucking Magic Voyage. I think at this point it's about to clear that this guy doesn't know how to say no to a script. Hey, also, there's Charlie Mrs. Central Brisby. Got, yeah, I was yeah, about to mention. Enjoy all, you... two enjoy all two minutes of her. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Could, to could be you imagine if a troll in Central Park got a sequel? Okay, okay, okay. To Damn. be fair, okay, to be fair to Don Delis, I can see why he was in tr Troll in Central Park since he just seems to be contractually obligated to be in every Don Blue thing yeah, ever. Yeah. Well, remember, he was, the, he was that. He was the John Ratzenberger of Don Bluth movies, basically. Also, can we talk? I, I get what the, why they did that, you know, to represent, you know, passage of time and, you know, also probably to be respectful towards the, 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 the dead voice actress. But can we talk about the fact that, uh, you know, Miss Brisby got a serious downgrade, uh, not necessarily in her appearance, but, uh, you know, from the previous movie, in a sense that uh, instead of playing a proactive role of some kind or being an inspirational figure, she's just basically a sedentary mother that barely cares about her children. I mean, like I said, the original book, Timothy was more so the protagonist as well, and I get it. Mrs. Frisbee has gotten older. That being said, keep in mind the opening narration didn't even mention half the stuff she did in the original movie, and let's just say when we actually get to Foreign Valley, it kind of gets a little more insulting in hindsight as well. Like, I get it, she's not the main focus, but at least pay her her dues and respect. So the film was directed by um, Dick Sebast, who had a it was had a pretty lengthy career. He started at Disney, working on like in 1972, working on things like Winnie the Pooh and Tigger Two, among other things. And he was also a producer, and he also produced and directed the first season of um, Sonic Sat AM. How did he oh. get down to this? Wait, 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 Dick. As in, was he the guy who founded Deke? Oh, he was apparently... Um, no, 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 no. That was, that was, that was oh, wow, movie. he worked he with also... everyone. Disney, Hanna-Barbera... Also... Sorry. He's also a storyboard artist for Spider-Man 1994, and he was a producer-director of the... Um... Incredible of the Hulk. 90s Incredible Hulk cartoon. He also directed so, nine episodes. He also directed nine episodes of Batman the Animated Series. He even won an Emmy on one of those episodes. Yeah. Yeah, Robin what happened? Just, this was just a paycheck. <laughs> Yeah, like I mean, he was also involved in The Legend of Tarzan, which was also a good show. Although, oh God, the frame rate. although Pedro, ah. you, it may please you to know, Pedro, in 2006 he joined Universal Animation Studios as the director of a number of episodes for the Land Before Time series. Oh, beautiful. Of course, I, I guess, had a I guess yeah. it might be a case where he was actually a fan. You grew up with Don Blue properties and desired to actually, you know, put his own ad, throw his own ad into the ring if possible. Again, Don Lewis is probably the best thing when it comes to returning characters. I, yeah, I know there's something later well, on coming up, so we'll save that for... That actually does around. work, too, because this kind of feels like a Secret of Them fanfic. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess that works. You know, also, one has for, to wonder... For something, for something technically off-screen, as you can imagine, you know, Don Lewis' character, the Raven, the, you know, the relationship that he apparently was having at the end of a previous movie, the Nostalgia Cult, which you can argue is predictable because of, you know, his kind of characterization, but it's a bit sour still. I will say that uh, for a direct-to-video movie, the animation looks good. I will say that. that as, 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 as usual, when it comes to these things, the backgrounds are better than the actual, you know, moving objects. So... So... I will argue that uh, for a direct-to-video budget, these animated, uh, the anima like, the actual characters also look fine. I've seen worse. So... Ugh. I'll just... Oh, yeah, by the way, this movie is a musical. Yeah, that I was about to say. You know how the original had some respect into limiting the number, just having one song that did not outstay his L, Welcome and 
was more of a somber tone. No, let's have the whole fucking shebang when it came to musicals oh my, number. It's the Lambo Four Times sequels all over Out of which I can um... argue only one is actually can be considered remotely, you know, decent. And even then, it's probably not just for the song in itself, but for whom sings it. Yeah, the, 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 the songs in this movie are crap. Okay, okay, okay. Let me okay, put it like... Like you said, talk about being disrespectful to the original. Okay, I'll put it like this. Each song has a problem with it. Uh, there are different problems, though. There are actually some songs where I do like the music and lyrics, but can't stand the singing. This one, the singing is fine, but the lyrics are so naff, and God, the song is incredibly unmemorable. And then there's arguably the best song, but... Well, I can't spoil... Well, I, I can't spoil what's wrong with that one. You just need to wait and see, audience. Also, the animation is so choppy in a lot of places. Yeah, yeah like... Not, not, yeah, now it's actually starting to get worse. Like, I get it. Up until this point, it's been fine, in my opinion. I get, like, I get it. MGM did not really add too much of an animated division around this point, so it was more of an outsourcing kind of thing. But still... Mm -hmm. So, guys, just one question. Why isn't Lee Timothy allowed to, you know, get a tutelage or college yeah, education or whatever at Foreign Valley? Why can't the rest of the family come? All right, time to talk. It's a lot of pressure to put on a kid. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No pre But yeah, you're the chosen one. You're going to save us all, Timmy. So make sure you do. And no pressure. But don't feel like you're in any you know, kind of pressure, okay? Okay. Oh, good. Let's give him the key to the city before he's done anything. <laughs> you know the bad. You know the bad. Guy, you know the bad, the rats of Nim turns out they're kind of bad people. Oh well, no no no, fair, Pedro. To be fair, yeah, aside, aside from you know the bad guy from the previous movie, there was an entire you oh, know God. faction of conservatives uh, that did not want to move to Form Valley. Also, oh, that's so... a that's actually a good uh, segue to you. See, part of the plot of the actual sequel to the book was about Timothy having to make nice with the offspring of Jenner. Uh, you, you may recall the traitorous rat who was mm -hmm. the main antagonist of the first film. Did Timmy have a sister? Do we see yes. actually. Again. Do we see him? We, we saw her barely a big, at the beginning with uh, Miss Brisby's family. Again. Oh, by the way, that's nice that Jonathan Brisby has a statue, but um, why doesn't Mrs. Brisby have a statue too? Just exactly. saying. Uh, she's not important. You can even have a statue of them right. as a couple if, if you really don't want to she have only, separate them. She only saved every fucking body in the first movie. Why would she get a statue? Because she's a f mouse. Huh. Uh. Also, um, a bit earlier on in that song, we actually got to hear Timothy sing, and uh, no, yeah. turns out he can sing. Yeah, well, he, he no, can't no, no. sing, and, and 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 the singing doesn't get any better as we go on. I was about to no. say it's not on full display yet. There's only one, uh, uh, like, uh, we have yet to see the best singer in the movie, but now, we'll Now, on paper, I, don't, I think this story does have some merit to the idea that Timothy has, uh, you know, Timmy has just a fuck ton of pressure <laughs> and responsibility thrown onto him, but he has to instead, you know, uh, showcase to be, you know, his own individual, whatever, you know, where this leads yeah, to good um... or bad. So, there is some merit <laughs> to the story. Jeez, <laughs> Jesus Nobody Christ, even, that's but... it, yeah, nobody even knows what his destiny supposed to be. Okay. Yeah. But the execution is done with... I don't even... I don't even think it's a problem like lack of subtlety or anything. It's just bad. It's Here's what happened. The, the writers know that their premise is flimsy at best because Nicodemus never said any of this Oh, wait, shit. this bit. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I have a feeling what does that you... Mean, what, the... Justin? No, what the fuck? <laughs> well, you see, Timothy, I know you have doubts, but I have the feeling that history is definitely going to think that you are just like your father, whether you like it or not. No, no. okay, no, okay, no, that's not Justin. I refuse to believe that's Justin, because the real Justin would never say something so stupid. Okay, not necessarily to a, to a, to a speaking role, but to be fair, this is the same character that threw his sword away, believing Jenner was dead. So, well, okay, this okay, was, this okay, was, okay, um... but okay, but that okay. Just I, I, I didn't say he was a genius, but he was definitely not this stupid. Also, um, um, this this effort, along with um, 
along with how badly received their Tom Sawyer cartoon was, um, killed MGM's production arm. Oh, so I can animation, really? Animation, I can only animation, 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 of... an, animation arm, I mean. I can only imagine this kind of animation and it will tell something like Tom Sawyer. Like, I'm it's sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. So, guys, you put in this shoddy piece of effort on the animation. I'm not even talking about the writing, but the animation is so choppy at times, and you act appalled that it didn't do well. Also, if it was direct to video, what sales were they basing that off of? Uh, well, that's the thing, though. Uh, Dom Bluth, obviously. Yeah, Dom Bluth was um. Dom Bluth was pissed at MGM because they said the film, the first film, wasn't profitable enough. <laughs> yeah. Ah, if you, if you it, recall, I go on. It, it, it's ironic, given how this was a big failure, but I'm sorry, uh, what was up with that line that you told me it was wrong for guys to, that that you told me there was nothing wrong with guys wearing the same underpants twice in a row? Yeah, th that's smart for characters who aren't even wearing pants. Not just that, what, these kind of comedy lines, uh, Compared to what the first, the series told of the first oh, movie, it's so... Oh, here charming. we go. What? The, the Listen. Low, the, most infamous, the most infamous song in the movie. All right. Oh. Oh, oh God. Why, okay, the same thing I say in our Lumber Fort com commentaries, I say here. Why make it a musical if your actors can't sing for shit? I, 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 I swear, I... I can be, you know, completely sure the kid actor was just a fine person, but uh, cannot sing for saving I mean, his life. Sorry. Well, let's see although, how his um, adolescent voice although does. To be, although, to, to be fair, these lyrics are so insipid, and I think even the, even the, even if he was a good singer. Actually, can I? Uh, no, yeah, sure, you I can't can. mute. No, 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 no. That I. That wasn't what I was gonna say, but it, I'm very tempted. But um. Oh, the singing what? isn't as uh, bothersome to me as the god awful audio mixing on this. Yeah. Also, Thanks, Jesus Christ! About, you guys were talking about returning actors from the last movie. Um, Arthur Malay did come back as Mr. Rages. Yeah. He retired yeah. from acting after this movie. Yeah, okay, he did not pass away, but it was the last thing he did. Okay, okay. And okay. honestly, I don't he retired. Him, huh? I will say this, I actually- Oh, oh no. And, and not to is played by Ralph Mashu, aka the protagonist of the Karate Kid movies. And guess what? He can't sing either. <laughs> Traumatized into retiring, that's a new one. <laughs> okay, I will say this, I actually do like the music and lyrics, but it's the singing. The singing is what kills it. Like, key on, key, key off. off. Key on, key off. Honestly, I don't think, like, the-, the the singing flows well either. It doesn't, yeah. like... I still like to see Diva's review of this, uh, but I can Im only imagine what she thought about this. Okay, okay, okay. Let me put it like this. I have seen plenty of examples where a song has terrible lyrics, but is salvaged by just some of the best singing possible. This is the opposite, where a song that could have been good is ruined entirely by the singing. And I'm sorry, <laughs> the people listened to this and thought, yes, good job, that sounds great. Like, at least with Land Before Time, you could go with the argument that, oh, those are kids, so it's kind of in a kid's nature to maybe not sing the best, even though I'd argue also, that the singing there was infinitely also, better than um, this, but... No. Oh, no, it is, yeah. Also, me and... Uh... Me and Pedro were watching one of those really cheap adaptations of, um, what was it? Uh, it, was that, it, was, it? It was that, uh, basically the songs in, was it, it was based off a Russian story, I think. Oh, no, Anastasia, okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good point, okay. Um, well, actually, this is kind of important. Oh, scene, so. good songs, Avis, but... I'll, I'll, I'll sum it up. The songs in that were rubbish, but the singing, especially from the main female, is, um, great. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it more after this. Yeah, you guys been constantly hyping me yeah. up as the yeah. big chosen one, so why don't you let I me know? I thought I was the chosen one. <laughs> You're part of the team. That's why also, you okay, are yeah, yeah, you're part of the team, which is why we're constantly putting Rem you on the, on the bench. Remember Brilliant. how in the first movie the whole thing about, you know, food poisoning dragon was actually handled, how Justin talked about that to Miss Brisby, and she definitely volunteered just because she thought she could actually, you know, 
help uh, these people, you know, and it was, you know, given with the actual, you know, graceful anything. And yeah. here instead we have this, this it's also, arcade. This pro the problem with them make oh. I'm sure she's not a love interest. Nah, of course not. Um, this also makes a pro- Making the rats of Nim such assholes like this also creates a problem for the original film. Because, yeah, I guess in hindsight, the rats of Nim deserve to die a horrible death. Well, hey, 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 hey. I mean, you know, at worst, they've just beat him up and haven't delivered on it. Like, hey, it's not like they're kidnapping anyone. Like, it's not like they're doing anything actively evil. That would be absolutely <laughs> uh, uh, uh. stupid. Oh, yeah, obviously. Oh my god. Yeah, also, that's a thing to- I guess, I guess props for breaking the stereotypes and having a dog chasing the rats instead of a cat. Hey, hey, uh, hey, um... Hey, Shira, get, uh, what's, how's this for a premise for a love story? You find your girlfriend literally in the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> your waifu was in the trash can. The joke right hey, Your waifu is trash. <laughs> hey, 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 daddy, how did you meet mommy? Well, that's an interesting story, son. I, she, I was, we're going for my garbage can, and she hap I happened to find her there. It's so probably a different context considering they're rats, you know? So basically the sword art online section of the con. <laughs> <laughs> that said, apparently it's... the. I'll talk claws. Oh, hold on, though. She can read. Hold on. I thought only the rats of Nim knew how to read. Where did you le learn to read? That's Nim? actually a plot point. Yeah, I know. I thought she was a rat. No, 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 no. She's no. a mouse. Wow. Taste crackers. It's a good thing the dogs cannot actually jump over the fence. And we got to the next scene! I'm so tempted. Oh, here we go. I'm so tempted to. You know what? I'll do it. What? A woman reading? That's just preposterous. You always think you know better than everyone else. It's not like we gave you a whole song suggesting that you know better than everyone else. This is just gaslighting, pure and simple. It is. It's got me really funny when we come to this. What Jova was foreshadowing earlier is about to happen, if I remember correctly. Yep. Who's this Disney reject? Uh, she is a. I think her name's She's Jenny. The character that the writers pulled out of their ass. There if you were a call during the backstory, there were actually rats that were actually oh, there you go. to be dead. The yeah, in the van, so. And there were so, mice yeah, as Jenny well, McBride. basically. She's voiced by. She's voiced by Hendon Welch. Mm -hmm. Turns out some of them actually survived. It is a rat contact, but you know I can't believe that still. I think when they say the Lost Six, they're referring to the mice that were kept along with the rats. Yeah, which each of them founded in our respective So let's family. see what our friends, the rats of them, had to say about all this. Screw you, get out. Um, You're the half opposite, right. The opposite, the opposite, actually. <laughs> You'll see. So there you go. Our connections to the, the actual sequel moon? book. That Nim is in danger. Sorry, that uh, Foreign Valley is in danger. Oh my god. Also, the full moon? No, wrong, Mr. Ryder. You're not writing a werewolf uh, movie. <laughs> like, you know what? Uh, I'm, I... Also, I recognize um, this voice actress. Uh... I Ladies and gentlemen, this is your director speaking. We see, uh, we're going through some turbulence and we're entering a different movie for now. Please stay tuned. Wow, actually sounding like Strangled Cats. Yes, it really looks like we've entered a different movie. Where are we right now? <laughs> I guess Cats 2019, just with, without the, the ugly CGI. What, was the movie two minutes too short, so you had to end this irrelevant cat scene in? <laughs> well, I think these will actually factor in later to the plot, but yeah, will talk they? about a big look I don't remember. moment. I don't watch this. I don't watch this movie often, for obvious reasons. <laughs> so who's voicing the... the female cat? Uh, uh let me see. What's her name? Because I, I heard that this voice actress already. It's probably Tress McNeil or something like, or someone... Let's like, see... Uh, God, imagine if it was Pat Carroll. I doubt it. Oh, uh, Ursula? Is no, it Empty Shrew, that's her name? No, no that's No, Empty Shrew was in the first. Uh... uh, there's someone called Jamie Cronin voicing Teresa Breeze. Oh, no, 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 Ryan, this can't be it either. 
Poor cat, sir. Well, sure, right. We may have some murdered cats on our hands. I can't really find it on Wikipedia. I'll have to look and. Yeah. They already murdered our ears. Maybe IMDb. She was like, there's an exception to the rule. Yeah, sometimes there is. Uh... I mean, I, underst I understand. I kind of do the same even if I have, uh, you those, know, sympathy for rats. So. Those, uh, those cats are uh, Muriel and Floyd, played respectively right, by Andrea. By Andrea Martin and Harvey Corman. Oh, yeah, Harvey this place. Corman. Yeah, the sad part is that. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Yeah, here we here go. Here we go. Listen here. I'll pick apart why that's stupid later, but for now, this bit. And uh, now they are holding her I against her will. Why? See, see Shiro, it's the opposite because they don't I want to risk. Uh, they don't want to risk her. Uh, but she knows where they are now, so she's reliability. Okay, so they're, okay. They're trapped in here. Okay. Sometimes the scene cuts off to the same background. Oh wait, but hey, yeah. but hey, you know, at least they're not keeping her prisoner, right? Well. Oh wait, no, they are keeping her prisoner. Yeah, yeah, God, this said, is so awful. They're prisoner. Jesus, this is a. This you is know, a. So, you, go on. you do realize this makes Foreign Valley out to be a hostage cult now. Yeah, it's like I said. Not, this makes the first movie worse. I guess apparently the Rats of Nim did deserve to die a horrible death. But hey, Where's but hey, but hey, but you... hey, but hey, guys, enough on making Foreign Valley out to be terrible. How about we do something to make Timothy come off as terrible? Why not? Why also, not at this point? You guys are eight movies in by this point when it comes to Land Before Time. Did we ever have a situation where someone, you know, entered entered the Great Valley and was not allowed to leave? No. Nope. No. Wow. They usually come in and take people out of it. <laughs> the, well, oh, here we go. <laughs> Martin has apparently been missing. Off first. screen. And, and, uh, and keep in mind, though, Timothy has not yeah. acted affected. <laughs> he's been stuffing his face and singing off key, and he's just been happy dandy <laughs> duty while his brother is missing. Wow. I like how you make him mention off key. And yes, <laughs> it bears repeating. Disappeared off screen. Your favorite. Like, I'm okay. sorry. Um, uh, and honestly, I, mean, I, I know, know exactly why that line is there, because otherwise it would create a plot hole later on. Yeah. I know the film is only an hour long, but... Jesus. I mean, Dibs, look, there's so much filler songs in here, why not take advantage of that screen time to actually show this shit? <laughs> yeah, why do you need filler in a movie that's barely over an hour? You I say know, that, right? and we just went through Land Before Time 8, a movie that could have easily been done in 20 minutes, and yet it's 1 hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> but yeah, uh, let's go back to that line where they said, Oh, the risk to Foreign Valley would be too great. What risk, though? Foreign Valley isn't going. Just, like, go and rescue them. Like you have done before, and you should the be fine. Entire point of, the entire point of getting to four body was because also, there the humans would not notice them. I also love how they just came out out of another garbage can. What's with this movie in garbage cans? Maybe Again, the they're rats and mice. So... Is that is this the director's way of admitting to me that he's making garbage? Like... <laughs> okay, to be fair, it is a common trope of, you know, mites or rats and cartoons making buildings or structures out of trash and garbage, so I'm actually fine with that one. Look the whimsy guys. Oh. I'm not saying it's a problem, it's just that, uh, you know, it's, they could use other things, but no, the director made sure to have two garbage can scenes. Although, um, funnily enough, Pedro, a storyboard cleanup artist that worked on the movie by the name of Paul Dale said on Twitter that the film's a piece of crap. Had the well, they, they escalated quickly right there. Mm hmm. Yeah, what Webb said also, yeah, what Shira just said, like seriously, they they literally just suddenly started acting all lovey dovey, out of literally out of nowhere. They barely even talk to each other. Bird up. Oh don't worry guys, that's just set up for the incredibly awkward and out of nowhere romance. But also, now I we can say it's that... not out of nowhere. During that shot where you could see the feet, uh, the the dress was colored differently. When the rom when the romance oh. between 
Jeez, uh... When the romance between Chloe and Rachel is more believable than yours, you have a problem. Damn. Jesus. That is bad. I bet this is less toxic. Given though. what you've told me. Well, it is less toxic, but it's I'm talking about believability. Oh, by the way, oh, uh, oh, 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 what? Oh, what? Oh, what? Now you're suddenly cold towards him? What happened? To... Bad. I guess nearly dying is a bit of a turnoff for her. Well, he's equally very not good at his job. But... Oh, by the way, oh, by the way, that hawk is indeed voiced by Frank Welker, as was Killer the Bulldog not, and the uh... Snake. Oh my God, sure! I just realized something. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is as toxic. I think about it. Like she's one of those. Uh, who knows, who's lovey lovey towards you one moment, but then she's abusive to you the next, maybe. Oh god. Okay, because Pedro, of Tia, this is the same thing from, um, uh, the uh, Tarzan 2. Yeah. Yeah. Eh? I have Except not seen these, that one yet. Carter Peel I mean, essentially, oh, a, 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 a plot element yeah. is similar. A character who normally would be defenseless manages to scare all predators by, you know, yelling inside like a trumpet structure like that, a horn. Okay. Oh, wait, but, the Great Owl? The Great Owl was in this movie? I wish. Uh, well, I was just gonna say what are you Buster. talking yeah, about? Of course because, he is. Uh, because apparently we needed also a couple of new characters, we have a very annoying sort of sidekick, so when we just got foreshadowed, a caterpillar. I forgot whose voice actor he is, but uh, yeah, he's not really great. Let me see. Cecil, he is played by Meshack Taylor. I don't know him. Like, or I him. get it. Uh, you saw Thumbelina, you wanted to replicate some of those characters from there. So Why would you want to replicate Thumbelina? That film was a failure. In fact, that film Not was one of the first animated films to get a Razzie. <laughs> I, can tell you Joma, but, I can tell you, Joma, that that movie is more beloved in my country than Anastasia, believe it or but that, not. But, that, but, that's the thing, but that's the thing, though. Thumbelina, of all of Don Bibb's movies, Thumbelina is probably the most bland and vanilla and what? Who cares type of movie? But Pedro, it has Jody Benson in it, so it has to be a classic. Yes, it has. Jo yes, it has Jody Benson in it. You know what Jody Benson was also in? Um, the recent Little Mermaid remake has a cameo, but uh, that also, doesn't um, make that movie good. Go on. Also, um, this is uh, this is Brisby. Um, what few lines she had because the actress who played her in the first film committed suicide in 1987. Um, she's voiced by Meryl um, from Metal Gear Solid, Debbie My West. Oh, Mel oh, oh, God. Why are you... Mel I think her name was Melissa something, I think. Debbie My West. Also, the lead, Debbie West, okay. The lead scientist who's torturing these poor animals is played by, yes, you can hear it correctly, Eric Idle. How? What is he doing here? I mean, I will say this, uh, knowing what we know also mm. later, this was probably a better role to him than fucking Casper, I guess, but he's still not very funny. Although, um, well, funny enough, uh, Tio, the same year this film came out, he was in um, an Alan Smithy film, Burn Hollywood Burn. Also, I'm pretty sure around this time he was also in that uh, Rule of Red Nose Reindeer animated movie we commented made by Good Times. Uh. Well, at least Debbie Mae West herself had Metal Gear Solid 1 in the same year. Wait! So that's that. It is really interesting, the actors that this movie managed to okay. get. Okay. See, guys, do you want more of, you know, insulting and throwing garbage at the first movie? Gee, that sounds a bit like Don Dolly's, but nah, I no, couldn't you're be. just getting your ears confused, come on. There's okay. no way we're actually gonna deter the, you know, the Grey Tower in any kind of way. Of course not. Uh... Yeah, apparently, another thing that happened off screen is that the Great Owl left. I forgot if he eventually if he or died, died or just, you know, went, went away. So, of course, Jeremy took his place and became a fucking con artist like it's Captain Quark or something. Brilliant. I, I don't even know what to say of, of this. It's just awful to the memory of the first movie. At, at this point, this is just like... 
uh, like how many things from the first movie can we ruin? Okay, we ruined Mrs. Brisby, we ruined the Great Owl. What next can we ruin? Oh, we ruined Timothy. Oh, we also gotta ruin Nicodemus. We can also ruin the rats of Nim by making him Wait. evil assholes. I, I think um... the worst thing that could have happened if they, if they said that Miss Brisby also died off screen in between movies, but thankfully they did not do that. So. I love how they oh, managed God, to ruin so... Nicodemus, even though he's already dead. Yeah. And yes, we have a music number about this con artistry. Because, because this not? is important. Oh because my god, I, com I completely forgot about the song. Gee, hey, hey, Glibs, here's another song we could have cut to use that screen time to show especially uh, how because, Martin got kidnapped. There especially go. because this entire <laughs> sequence is war padding. The, on the grand scheme of things, they did not really need it to have go to be going see, to the Great Howl. See, the, what's her name? The female mouse? I forgot her name. Um... Jenny, I think uh, it was. Is, is, it, is it Jenny? Yes, this is Jenny. Jenny. Yeah, but Jenny's got the right idea. She looks as bored as I am. But hey, oh. she's voiced... Jenny McBride, yeah. Yeah, voiced by Hayden Walsh. Wait, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, was... Hayden Walsh. She, she was, she's Starfire and Teen Titans. Wasn't she Kyrie at some point? No, you're thinking, also... of, Hayden no. you're thinking of Hayden Planet yet. Oh, wait, never also, mind, never uh, mind, never mind. American mind. Express joke? Never mind, she was Alice, actually. Oh, there you go. Oh, now she's man. voiced by one of Zack and Cody's friends. Okay, is this... Okay, woman, <laughs> make up your mind. Are you into this guy or not? But don't you see, guys? It's to add development to their relationship? No, no, it's not. No. This is, stu this is stupid. This is stupid. Stop being stupid. Well, 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 hey, you know, at least it can't get any worse, right? I mean, we have, like... It, it, just over a third left of this. Yeah, it's amazing in how such little time, how much damage we can do. Uh, when did um, when did that when did that blue sequel that was actually made by him come out? Uh, Bartok Bimani, oh, the same year I... as this. The same year as this, actually. Huh. 1998. Yep. And I remember, I think Fox still had uh, the animation, proper animation division at that uh, time. Uh, okay. Anastasia came out in 97, whereas Bartok came out in 98. I only have uh, Bartok two. Bartok came out, actually, Bartok came out in 1999. Oh, was it 99? Okay. I only have there. two questions. One, did nobody realize how different the Great Owl seems? And two, why are you paying him with money now? Like... I mean, the Great Owl never charged money beforehand, and secondly, what would you animals even want with money? Your animals! Also, that's obviously not an owl. I remember I remember when the, the Jungle Book did this sequence. It was much funnier there. Also, um, I, I'm sure it won't surprise any of you to know, but I've forgotten every single one of these songs the moment they finished. That's oh, the intended so reaction, Shiro. Oh, okay. So like, oh, so, so, oh, so it's like the, the Eric song from the Little Mermaid remake. Or the songs from Mary Poppins Returns. From what I heard, apparently the new song that Ariel has when she comes on land is apparently also very forgettable. Yeah, I disagree. I think it was pretty good. Uh, the, the, the I've only one heard one. Eric's song of the new ones because Pedro no, showed it to me and myself, it's so very bland. <laughs> yeah. Hell, um... In terms of products related to Don Bluth movies, um, uh, that um, that that his animation for uh, the Scissor Sisters Mary music video is better than this, and that's not even that doesn't even have a plot. Again, also as a reminder, the first movie was done with the blood and sweat of all the animators, which again, when you really think about it, it was you know that back then the equivalent of crunch. You know, um, yeah. but at the very least, he pro but what it pro manages to produce because with all of that pain was something so beautiful. You know that uh, that you know you you definitely tell that that was trying to something proactive. This uh, this is just like I don't again. I don't know what to say. This is just awful. So this is it, guys. Yes. We actually get to go to the eponymous Nim. Already again because we we are I get the idea originally the script was supposed to have a bit more like in this middle section but because they did not have much time or animation or a budget or a combination of them pretty, they just had much. to cut the place. Also, the, also unless... customary. Yep, we're totally not coming in with you guys. This is where we part ways for the rest of the film. Uh huh. Sure, buddy. The most positive thing I can say about this movie is that sometimes 
the animation looks fine. Sometimes. What it feels like. So, that being said, believe it or not, this sequel has not yet begun to suck by its own merits. Oh, don't get me yeah. wrong, it's terrible, but believe it or not, we have not gotten to the point where things actively just plummet. Yeah, but the, the, the climax is actually where the movie officially starts shitting all over itself. But well, there is kind of a twist. The, 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 when it comes okay. to the actual twist, there is something that I genuinely kind of like in, in in a sense that you really wouldn't expect what's happening. It's mm -hmm. just that the um, the insanity comes also with the, the what the fuck, you know. Well, factor to it. From, um... <laughs> okay. I have no idea what's going on. I'm sorry. Basically, Doctor Valen. Imagine... Basically. Basically, Dr. Valentine has turned the other humans into dogs, apparently. Yeah, we saw that he also kidnapped the cats, which is strangely odd, you know, because, you know, still human society, why is nobody doing anything? And and the fact that the place is strangely, in, yeah, in this habit, yeah, yeah, it's too quiet. Strangely, are... you know, absent. The reason it's hard to lose, to lose the plot edge is because there's, like, what little theme this story has, it's barely explored. And to speak even more from an analytical point of view, oh, the characters. Yeah. And apparently Dr. Valentine oh, is turning the rats into bodyguards as well. Uh-huh. An Oreo joke here? So, Pretty much. Uh, an Oreo joke here? No? Okay, it's not. Oreo. Um... um Look at, let's look at the characters for a moment. Timmy, of course, is, uh, we already talked about Timmy, but look at, um, Jenny here. Okay, we've talked about how the romance is terrible, but what about her, her, on her, on her, on her own? Like, seriously, she's a, she has all the personality of a piece of cheese. Maybe like, we again, could have established something it. in the 20 minutes or so that she's been in this whole movie. Yeah, Jesus. I get the idea there was supposed to more that probably would have fleshed her as well, and in, instead, because all of that stuff might have been cut away, you know, instead we get a really a blank slide that occasionally, first, uh, incredibly the fuck out for Timmy for no real apparent reason because to, again to to answer to what uh, you know um swan princess said uh, like she's really not really noticing anything particular in him since it's mgm i wonder if um I wonder, I wonder if they pulled a um okay i got no proof of this or anything i'm just spitballing here mm -hmm. but but I can imagine MGM probably wasn't the hotless, wasn't, the sort wasn't exactly high on their priority list, because, you know, they were making James Bond still at the time. I yeah. love it. I love it. So, Secret of Nim. Foreign Valley made such a big note of not coming, but then they suddenly decided, actually, Jenny is right, so here we are to help. What? Again, all the off screen development for these people. Brilliant. Oh, and look at that. Uh, Jenny's parents. Uh huh. So, uh, what exactly changed since, since the last time we talked about this, Justin? Also, remember, yeah, remember how the, the rats of Neem were able to actually pry open stuff because we were able to read and understand what happened to that? Oh! Oh, it's now. Is it? Oh, no. Oh, oh no. no. Well, I guess we're fucked. What? Why is huh? Harvey Corman in this movie? Because I think he was. I think, I think he was trying to find a worse project than the Star Wars Holiday Special. And what's Andrea Martin doing? And here is his co-partner. Jesus. Um. What is it, What's Andrea Martin most famous for? Well, she's in a lot of stuff. Um, she's in Martin. Hedwig and the Angry Inch, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, My Big Fat Greek Wedding 2, The Rugrats Movie, Jimmy Neutron. Oh, she was in the Anastasia movie. Uh, which, which Black Christmas? The the oh, the original. Yeah. Yes. All right, here we go. Ah, Jesus. Oh, Christ. yeah, I'm about to say to you also, <laughs> when, the, when the musical sequence starts, you better look away because there's a sure. lot of shit. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Turns out Dr. Valentine is not the mastermind and is just as the other humans. But who could Eric Idle be then? Why, it's a crazy looking mouse here. Who? 
Who the fuck are you? Y'all on, Edge? Wait for it. Yep! That's Martin! That oh, yeah. did you uh, call me? Uh, I called me evil! So, anyway, huh? guys, we just got, we remember, we got that line that he was kidnapped off screen because otherwise he would show up here with no foreshadowing whatsoever. Yep! Why does he, uh, like, oh. also, when he when he's the range oh my god and when he's the range he's voiced by Eric Idle for some yeah. reason and yet and, he stays. and yet I'll oh give god. Him, okay th I will give him one credit this is the best song in the movie because well it's Eric Idle you know so again, I'll be back in a bit <laughs> the, the, the twist in itself is something that I actually kind of like the idea that Doctor Valentine wanted to do this but instead you know um, underestimated Martin and Martin took over the entirety of Nim you know to showcase the fact that uh, rats had gained this kind of sapience and became you know uh, better than the humans and also as a subversion of being a son of Jonathan Brisby who instead becomes evil despite the fact that his father was good again there are interesting themes here but they're so squandered okay so okay it's like, uh... this, it's like what the nostalgia critics said this has become the uh, pinky of the brain yeah, and this song much. also sucks because it's just Martin constantly trying to say, please join me, we can rule the galaxy together. To follow up on what Ribs just said, basically what Jesus. happened is... So basically, basically too, here's what happened. Dr. Insano took over and wrote the rest of the script. <laughs> right. And then the rat becomes a mad scientist. Like, okay, <laughs> like Tio said, Maybe with good execution, you could have had it be, yes, even with Martin as the antagonist, maybe work something out. That being said, given the slapped-ass execution that we actually have in this movie, this just comes out of nowhere and will absolutely whap you in the face with how stupid it is. And the animation becomes super deranged just for the sequence alone. And you also, yes, Martin is building up a fascist regime with this. With pigeons! And yet he wants to take over the world. Starting small, I guess. No pun intended. I get what they were trying to do. It's supposed to be the villain song, but it's surprisingly cheerful because it's just that insane. But again, the whole thing is just... You don't know what to think at this point. This is so bizarre and insane that it's also, just like, what Martin the fuck is even happening? Martin still has a fetish for being electrocuted, I guess, because that's not doing anything anymore. Well, supposedly it makes him smarter with each zap, essentially. <laughs> what was... Th Eric, what was that yes? Um, also, why, uh, why does he have a British accent now? Because he's evil now! Because, be well, because he's Eric Idol, and because... The, it's the worst fee oh, no, the payoff. <laughs> <laughs> so then, the musical sequence was just okay. a waste of time. Okay, let's all admit that. Tw let's all admit that ten years after this, the Dark Knight did that joke better. Moving on. Yeah. Also, that's the thing, Dweebs. Uh, that, that's the war of the movie. You know, uh, being experimented on by scientists in a cruel way turns you into the most evil thing imaginable. British. Yeah. Also, that frame rate on the cage, uh, Jesus. Oh, like well, the... at least he gave him some water. Like, the frame rate's been off the whole venture. <sighs> yeah, that's all. Yeah. Does she? Does she? Does she? We don't know. We literally know jack shit. Up. What exactly do you even know about her that would make um, you say that? I can, I can, I can tell you what we know about her. Go on. Well, her parents got kidnapped by Nim. That's not a character trait. Okay, that's okay, okay, okay. No, okay. no, no, it's what we know about her. Her parents got kidnapped by Nim. That's it. Anyway, I guess he knows her from when they were both kidnapped. But anyway, he decides he wants to make her his queen. Because I guess that means both brothers have a thing with this the same girl. This character is literally just a trophy for these two to fight over. It's... Oh, Jesus. The Dulcinea effect. Magnificent. Wait. Wait, so wait, 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 wait. It's all your fault you didn't... What? What? Oh my god! Oh, of I... course, now we need a sad song. No, 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 no! Yeah. Even better, Teal. It's a reprise of his, uh, my father's son song. 
Mm-hmm. For the record, we still have like 50 minutes of this. Yeah, basically. Okay, okay. So, me, so I'm sorry. Timothy says, it's all my fault. I didn't listen. No, it's not. Like, Martin was going to attack Foreign Valley whether or not you came. If anything, you'll actually get closer to stopping him by being here. Yeah. So, basically, the first movie, we had Mrs. Brisby in a, a, a great demonstration of a, a, a really great female animated protagonist for the, when a time in a time where it wasn't all that common. Now we have this movie where the female protagonist gets it's literally a trophy for two dudes to fight over. Can great, we even job, call guys. her a protagonist? Well, she's the closest thing to one. <laughs> oh my god, can Ralph actually finally pull off a note? Now... Oh no. no, wait, never mind. Oh. No! <laughs> oh, it's the duet song! Goodies! Yeah, it is because, because American Tail did it. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see if Hayden Walsh can sing because she's singing in harmony with Ralph, so it's hard to. Oh, oh, okay. to mention, well, I found it hilarious because in American, in American Tail, this, the duet song like this was done by siblings and not um, lovers. Okay, so. I did hear it. <laughs> I did hear a bit of it isolated, and uh, yes, Tintin's a much better singer than Ralph. Definitely. No, no surprise there. Also, yeah. um, uh, she was also an additional voice actress in Tangled, the movie, I mean. God, I completely forgot about this song, too. May I guess okay, that must have been my mind well, blocking central, it out. These songs literally enter one year of your head and exit the other. Okay, okay, okay. Go on. Okay, there are two songs that stick with me. The I'm My Father's Song song, and the Eric Idle villain song. Well, obviously. Um, as for the whole MGM, but as I was talking about, if you want to watch an animated Tom Sawyer, watch the World Masterpiece Theater version. There you go. Mm -hmm. I just, also... I just did you a favor. It's, it's on my YouTube channel, in fact. <laughs> Shaq took Steve in his blog. <laughs> I consider it a favor to people who see this movie. Just to, to consider it. <laughs> yes, hey, it can be. It can be both. Oh God, this thing! Remember, they gave him the key to the city, which of course means it works on the cage of the name facility. Um, it's that stupid mentality people have when not keys. To mention, not to mention, you you can tell from the animation that Timmy could just squeeze through the bars. Okay, okay, wow. okay, okay, okay. How Timmy shitty is this cage? Okay, okay, okay. To be fair, he didn't use it to unlock it. He just used it to undo the latch. But yeah, kind of I'll like be... in Pirates of the Caribbean. Well, I get that, but it was so ridiculously easy, though. Well, he he needed encouragement to realize he could do that. Again, this is supposed to be essentially Timmy's moment to shine, to become the true hero, you know, despite not being in his power shadow or anything, but it, re it resonates so poorly. Wow. Oh yeah, Ratatouille, that's a film I could be watching. Yeah, that's well, a much better movie we could be watching, yeah. Well, at least my final thoughts should be um, concise enough, considering mm -hmm. this film, aside from being bad, doesn't really have a whole lot to say. Here's my final thoughts. It sucks. The end. Brilliant. Uh oh. And this immediately starts a fire. That's the Rotten Tomatoes consensus uh, quote. Like, it sucks. The end. My favorite one is the one about Gotti where it says, forget about it. Okay, I gotta wonder, is that, what, what is the deal with that movie? It's told out of isn't. order, it tries to glorify, you know, a mobster because the movie was apparently done with uh, the assistance of uh, the rest of his family, you know? And John Travolta is not convincing and portraying an aging man. Also, the music is done by Pitbull, I think, for some reason. Pitbull? <laughs> uh... Also, the elevator is done by Acme, apparently. I guess I can blame this movie on Steve uh, Martin, then. Oh, hold on, but this is a MGM movie, not a Warner Brothers um, movie. Like, Acme and, and actually is a thing that was outside of Warner Brothers. It's essentially, it essentially, I remember this story because it was being told uh, to me when I start, when I was studying this movie, all about the you know, history of literature and cinema. Apparently, it was chosen as a fictional, you know, name to be used for public domain purposes to represent a generic company. And the, the, the reason it's called like that is because it, it constitutes with the letters that are easier to find on a telephone book. Alright, 
causes the Holdridge. All right, time to rescue the dumbass in distress. Well, I mean, I wouldn't even call it that. Like, it's not like, you know, she is She's immune from getting kidnapped. Huh? Yeah, pretty much. Again, the, the biggest trait that she exhibited is she's occasionally thirsty for our hero, but that's not really a character trait. No. See, the thing is, it's like, a uh, if, device, if, if they made her flirty in general, like as a main character trait, that would be fine. But no, they go back and forth between that. Also, Mar uh, Marty just pulled a look at your look at your woman yep. go back to me. The great <laughs> villain Martin, defeated by a bloody slingshot. Oh, is this gonna? Uh, I think we're almost at the point. It gets where we're even. Get oh, it gets even better, Dwibs. I think we're almost at a. Well, actually, no. It's later when he goes back. Actually. Also, I think Ralph Macchio was um, oh, trying to okay, be in then. a worse oh. movie than um, than Karate Kid Three. If you want to make a musical, make, get people who can <laughs> sing. Yes, you got Eric Idle. But don't get Ralph Macchio. <laughs> like, the or at the very least, dub over him. Someone should have told. Someone should have told Mamma Mia. So Watch this. Like, when they made Pierce Brosnan sing. The new and improved Martin, defeated by a book. Knowledge truly uh, oh, is powerful. Uh, and we got. To... <laughs> what the fuck? It's like this movie was edited in the 2006 edition. Oh, of look, the advice came in handy. Team, maybe to do a British accent, uh, sure. Oh, God. Ralph Macchio doing an Eric Idle impression. That's uh, cursed beyond belief. Well, that's something I never thought I'd hear. How did you oh, think yeah, of the obvious yeah, yeah. thing to do? Fly, my pretties! Fly! <laughs> but it's okay, they're going in the wrong direction. We'll just leave <laughs> whoever to be startled by those. He just did a, oh, Martin, and shakes his head. Da, 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 did you forget da. to tidy your room? <laughs> I think it's, we're almost at that bit, one of my favorite bits. Or favorite? Is that, uh, um, no, one of relative? my, one of my, one just of my most laughable. One of my favorite bits to laugh at, particularly. Because it really highlights how sloppily also, written I this movie is. I think the mouse with the red and blue jacket is supposed to be Brutus. Yes, it you is. Know, the guy with the hell beard in the first movie that was intimidating as fuck. I know, right? Now he's goofier in this one. What? I just... I mean, the I, movie's almost over, Joe. That's the, that's the scriptwriter trying to sound witty, but he's not. Yeah, who wrote this movie? Let me see. You know, oh. Right, yeah, the fire oh, okay, from we're earlier. Almost, yeah, we're, we're almost at that bit, actually. You know, I, I love... I know what happens during the fire. You know, I love how the way to circumvent the threat with the army is to just say they're going in the wrong direction. Like, Jesus. Um, a lot of these things in this movie are dismissed with one line that either sums up an event or tells you that. Oh, here you go. Well, okay, guys, remember how um, Jenny told uh, Timmy that he needs to follow his heart? Well, keep in mind. Oh, yeah, uh, for, right. For the next, few, for the, for the next minute. What was that for? Fucking racist. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, I think, I think oh. it's now, yeah. yeah. Yeah, right now. Listen to this. Listen to this. Oh, right. How did Martin's oh, cane oh, 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 sword oh, get oh, all oh, the oh, way oh, there? Hold on, Joba. Listen to this. Wait for it. Into our fuck. What? That felt earned. <laughs> it's that easy to fall in yeah, love? It's, it's, it's yeah, like the, the, yeah, that felt earned. It's it? like the script was done with mad leaves. <laughs> also, oh, oh my, oh my. Um, I don't know much about the other writers. Oh, you Sam two Graham are still and here. Chris, yeah, and Chris right. Hobble. I don't know much about the other writers, Sam Graham and Chris Hobble. But I do know uh, Jim Magan, who was credited for um, additional 
writing material. Um, he worked at Disney as well, like the <laughs> director. He made stuff like um, Gummy, the Gummy Bears, Duck Tales, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, among a bunch of Disney afternoon shows. And he was also a producer and creative consultant for Titanic, The Legend Goes On. Oh, so... Brilliant. I'm sorry, that last side. I've always loved you, Muriel! So, even the cats are in love. Although, sure, why funnily not? enough, he was... He was also involved in Mickey's House of Villains. That well, was I significantly I, I... better than any of these, so I don't know what's going on. Also, oh, Joe, that I'm pretty sure almost dying is uh, having an effect on people. Yeah, yeah, was also House, of, House of Mouse, like, that um, was a... Pac Man and the Ghostly Adventures, among other things. That was a joke at the end of Blues Brothers, Joe, with the Nazis. Uh... Don't you just love it, Shira, when you fall in love in the most casual- Oh, by the way, I love you. Just Again, that was the joke at the end of Bruce Roberts, uh, about to die in the car. Okay, yeah. no, I call bullcrap. Timothy is not nearly that heavy, and if anything, he should have snapped that wooden plank. Wow, uh, Senpai really is pathetic. <laughs> and somehow that keeps them from getting burned. So at the very least, the humans will be rescued, at the very least, I guess. But they're still dogs. Just don't think it's about fine. it. It's fine, the FBI will pick them up or something. So yeah, in a more in, basically it's the, the, we need the Indiana Jones 4 moment. Oh. Our characters explain, ex, escape an explosion inside the cage running out of a... The, oh. Um, actually, I'm, I'm gonna... Tio, I'm gonna... Did, did, did you drug us? Uh, are we in a hallucination? Hey, Jeremy! Whee! What kind of... What kind of sadistic ass do you take me for? I will make sure that you feel good doing it. Also, um, also, Tio, um, I have to object, um... The new King of the Fridge scene was more fun to watch than this. It was. Well, it was... It has a better animation because it was in CGI, I guess. Actually, I mean, maybe. Yeah, the... the... oh, sure, Jova. Be stuff that is reporting a real fridge in the So, yes, the day is saved, but wait, what about Martin? No, like, he's kind of messed up. And we really needed a reprisal of this song. With, with, with Timmy living in Robert Hubbard's house? Why? By the way, they're in love. Sure, yeah, they're, in lo yeah, they're in love because... Oh, are they it, married? Because that's how it works, right? Oh, and at the very least, we the end, I... and Timmy Eastwood got to live in Raleigh, too. But wait! <laughs> Hold no, on, no. it gets even better! <laughs> huh? Martin's oh, no. okay! They just, they just got married. What, she's pregnant? Hold on, Dad, but he's getting mad. Wait, wait, is she actually pregnant? Martin's no, back to his not. old self! Okay. Martin, not only is he cured from his madness, because you can't just do that, I guess, but he's not voiced by Eric Idle anymore. So, he, again, the movie is telling me that when you go mad, you become British. Good to know. <laughs> of course. Uh, no, that actually, that? okay, okay, to be fair, that's the first thing that this movie has told us that actually makes sense. Yeah. So... <laughs> The Brits do be crazy. Fuck this movie. But oh, hey, God. look! Now Timothy gets a statue! Not like well, we could have added on a bit for Mrs. Brisby or something! It doesn't it even, really it doesn't feels even like get named, could... it's just Jonathan Brisby and Son. Like, it's which one? Yeah, they really could. The, the only other way it would be if the statue was giving the middle finger to the camera. <laughs> 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 oh, this is so sure, this fire is earned. Fuck this. No post credit scene, you can close the video if you want. Final thoughts. Uh, can I go first? Sweeps. Well, that was shit. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We have a pop song for our credits? Nah, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not putting up with any more of this song's shitty music. Off. So not even that we could not even do at the ballad like in the first movie. Oh wait, never no, mind. Really, it's but... yeah, go on. Um. So um. Yeah. Um. Well. Okay. I'll start off with the positives. Um. Eric Idle. Uh, that's it. Um. <laughs> and for. 
And for well, the negatives are practically everything else, but I'll go a little bit more in depth. The animation, okay, I swear I've seen better looking direct to DVD animated films than this. This looks like something that would air on like TV first, not go to DVD. Those films normally have more of a budget. Um, the songs are terrible, not helped by the atrocious singing from anyone who's not named Hinden Welch or Eric Idle. Um, the story... story... <laughs> it's just a... Well, well, the story literally is built on lies. You know, the whole, oh, Nicodemus is actually a prophet. No, he wasn't. Um... And, and, and also uh, how it manages to mess up everything from the first movie. Like, Mrs. Brisby barely does anything. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't even get any credit for what she did. Um, anything else I can mention? Um, how about the fact that how about the how about the fact that the romance is literally handled even worse than Life is Strange Before the Storm, which in itself is, in my opinion, an achievement. Yeah, I mean, at least at least at least they tried to um, build it up in that game. They weren't successful, but they tried at least. This one okay, didn't even do mind. that. Never it just comes out of do, nowhere. Never mind. They do try the ballad, I guess. So. Gone. How yeah, nice of them. Also, oh, the so that's what that song was from prior. It's like in the movie, also, it starts in the middle of the song. Um, literally, the only saving grace of this whole movie is um, is Eric Idle because, well, I mean, he's, he's probably the one having the most fun out of everybody here. Would you say, um, Ralph? Ralph Mac Ralph Macchio sounds like he'd rather be anywhere else. Would you say this is the worst thing Eric Idle has been in? And yes, that's even no, counts. Casper, Casper is worse. So. Um, hmm. Okay, I haven't seen um, an Alice Smithy film, Burn Hollywood Burn, yet. So um... I know, I'll still take Shrek free over both of those movies. Both of these movies. Go on. Okay, you yeah, have to be specific I kind with of the have question, to agree. Jova. Specifically, his role or the product as a whole in which he's in. Uh, product, I mean, okay. product as a whole, and I'm also going to include that god awful reimagining of Journey into Imagination, the first uh, changed edition, which is vehemently hated by Disney fans. Hold on, let me rephrase that because I think I spoke that wrongly. Uh, what I mean is that I'll still take both Casper and this over Shrek free. That's what I mean. Yeah, because originally you said you Fair take enough. Shrek the third over these. <laughs> no, I think Pedro has a point. You know, hmm, I mean, it really is a tough call for me. Like, on the one hand, yeah, Shrek the third has issues, but man. It's hard for me to say if even Shrek the Third felt like more of an insult to its, you know, predecessor oh, okay. as this film. Like, at least Shrek the Third had good animation. This doesn't have bad. At least Shrek the Third had... Well, okay, no, I guess... Uh, well, yeah, actually, no, Shrek the Third kept from being a musical, so... Kudos in that regard for not doing that out of nowhere <laughs> like this film. But, uh... Um, well, to, to finish... To finish off, um, what what can I say? Um, You're welcome. It uh, it completely <laughs> butchers it completely butchers the last movie, and it, even uh, even on its own merits, it's crap. It's way too rushed. They're trying to fit everything like this in one hour, and they can't do that. All the rats of them are assholes because they try and they because they um, they force this chosen one stuff onto Timothy, which they don't even know. The, the, that so-called prophecy said it was a son. It could have been anyone. Hey, speaking of which, Dwibs, how about the fact that Timothy doesn't seem to act at all affected by the fact that his brother is missing off-screen? Yeah, that's the thing. How long did he have that letter for? Uh, well, given that Timothy's now an adult by the time he yeah, mentions there, there that letter... A, there is a huge time skipper that happens in between the song. It's kind of like what happens in Tarzan or Hercules, you know, but during the song, the passage of time, you know, is shown and several years pass between a teenage, teenage or childhood and adulthood instead, or at least the equivalent of that for this movie. So again, once again, it's another thing where the movie essentially tells what has happened off screen and it just so happens with the characters as it... But yeah, um, this film's shit. Um, thank you very much, Tio, for um, finally allowing me to watch this movie in full. 
Um, well, like like Deji said, or Drove, I forgot which, we would have had to get to this at some point, so why yeah, not? Yeah, and hey, honestly, given what we I'm now just, know, it could, have been a, it. it could have been a Christmas movie by the sounds of things. I mean, literally the only way this movie could have been worse is if they resurrected Jonathan Brisby from the dead and made him the villain. The bad guy, yeah. Oh, they could God. Have, honestly, they could have done that. Martin said that he found a way to reanimate the dead and reanimates John, his father's corpse. Uh, like, why not at this point? <laughs> uh, right. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. Next, Shiroi. Well, that was terrible. They really didn't need to drag it out as much as they, they did, considering they had stuff they probably needed to explain a little bit more. Wait, drag it out? Sure, I, the film was barely over an hour long. Yeah, but there was a lot of unnecessary filler, and then there was other stuff everyone was complaining needed better setup or better explanations, which they could have used the time for that, but no, it was filler anyway. Mm -hmm. Which really goes yeah, to you. show... Hey, Timmy, I love you. Ooh, I love you too. And that's it. That's the romance, ladies and gentlemen. It's still not the funniest use of padding I've ever seen, but uh, sure. What did you think um, of the songs? Again, I, I immediately forgot each one of them after they finished, and that wasn't me over-exaggerating. I don't remember a single song from this e movie. Even Eric Idle's song? That's a first. That's the thing, Drop. I had to burp during that. Yeah, I remember she had to burp. So I didn't even because... get the good shit. <laughs> Aside from the just say yes lyrics, most of them it's just rambling, you know, of representing madness. Yeah. Like, it, 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 the, the fucking song from a vizier in the Care Bears in Wonder the movie is more coherent. Damn. Ugh. But, um, let's see. Yeah, the singing was awful. I can at least say that. Mm hmm. Um, the love, uh, the whole love plotline is whatever, it just kind of happens because it was mandated, I don't know, I'm Every joking, but I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> sure, you so joke, but everyone ends up having a love confession during that flame scene. Timothy, the Yeah, cats. that's because they're about to die and they're all, like, letting out their feelings. <laughs> See, the thing is, uh, that actually is a good point, because while you were burbed, uh, there was this bit where basically um, Martin wanted to make Jenny his queen. So basically, remember, the first movie was about Mrs. Mrs. Brisby. Uh, you know, she was the main character and everything. We've gone from such a really compelling movie with a great female protagonist to now having this movie about a doofus, and the only major female character we have is nothing but a fucking trophy to be fought over by the hero and the villain. Yeah. I think it's a good statement to say, you know, the secret of Nim is, is dragged kicking and screaming into the mid to late 90s and all its trappings. I think that's it. This is, uh, um, pretty awful. All right, then. Dead. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I was not paying attention <laughs> to this film at all. Fair. But mainly because I feel, I feel like the audio was too low and everybody was too loud on my end. I was like, what the hell is happening? Well, like, sure, Even that, this movie just visually is ugly as hell. Well, it's like sure it's I mentioned. Boring. The sound mixing is terrible. Who? who I, I don't care about Timothy. He's not really an interesting character. The love interest, I don't even know what her name is. Jenny. Penny. Jenny. Jenny. Oh, like Jenny. Jenny Annie Dots from Cats. You know, like Jenny from uh, Forrest Gump. She she just feels like obligatory love interest with no chemistry. Uh and, and yeah, it just it's just a huge step down from the first movie. Why why'd you even bother? Like they fell down the entire flight of stairs. That, that is yeah. a legitimate question. Why did MGM bother? It's not like anyone was wanting, uh, you know, a sequel to this. Uh, and they had just, again, the best explanation I can come up with, which is, the others mentioned that uh, when it came to the news article, is that they just established an animation studio, you know, and they wanted to flex uh, and trying to check through the properties that they had, uh, you know, 
because you know they had the Tom Sawyer thing where it was running from. But I guess the default process was, was uh, let's see for the properties that we have and use one of our flagships, uh, you know, to uh, something attached to that uh, in order to promote this new service. Uh, but great fucking job, guys, I guess. Like, the weird thing is, is like, well, from what we've heard, it sounds like they didn't even really have faith in this. So my no. be my best theory would be they were like, guys, our animation branch is in a bit of trouble. What should we do? Oh, I know. Let's try and profit off of one of Blue's most famous movies, Secret of Nim. We own the rights to that, so... I cannot, call, I cannot even call this a money laundering scheme because I can tell not much was poured into this. Okay, can I... I will, I'll give the sequel credit. I can at least see more reason for this to exist than Monster Family 2. Still drawing a blank on how that movie, which bombed and got yeah. low critical and audience watching reception, got a sequel <laughs> with an even bigger budget. Continue, Dad. Yeah, uh, don't, don't bother with this movie. Forget about it. I. Oh boy. Can I go next? Well, Drova, yeah, go next, Drova. I actually am kind of fascinated with this movie, honestly. It's one of those movies that I legit get life from watching it, gaping in horror, and then riffing it a new one. Like This it is, is literally how Little Karibo feels about Cats 2019. In that, like, mm -hmm. well, it's just, it's so terrible that... I can't help but be amazed and just enraptured with it. And like I said, there are some songs I actually do legit like in this. I like Eric Idle's villain song, and I would like the I'm My Father's Song song if you know it was sung well. Like, that's the frustrating thing about some of these songs. These songs did not have to suck. And what I mean by that is that a lot of these songs feel like they come close to the cups of being at least tolerable. But man, that love duet where they are just really channeling American Tale, even though in this case the two are lovers instead of siblings. And to be fair, the sibling song has pretty much been converted into a song of love with how people tend to cover it and whatnot. Regardless though, these songs did not have to suck. But they found new and experimental ways to make pretty much each one except for Eric Idle's suck. And even though Eric Idle's song is good, the context of it is quite possibly the worst thing of this movie. Martin, nearly out of nowhere, being the bad guy. And holy cow, a bad guy with ambitions to rule the world. With rats riding what pigeons. What Whatever happened to Marty's army that he was amassing? Remember, Tio, um, so Timothy told them to go ahead and I, I forget if him like, pointing the was... direction, okay, what then? Like, I'm sorry, was it Did because... Did they of screen? Or, like, is there a town of humans that are gonna be horrified to see muscular rats riding pigeons? Like... That's just it? Also, those could have been innocent rats that were warped. We're not gonna help them? I guess not! <laughs> Timothy, the great hero, has fulfilled his duty to the absolute Ray. bare minimum. But yeah, you know what? In fact, speaking of Timothy, a recurring issue of this sequel is that it ruins just about everyone from the past movie. Arguably, the one who gets off best is Mrs. Brisby, and that's because she's barely in the movie, honestly. Heck, the siblings barely get any speaking roles. And, yeah, speaking yeah. of, nice, nice job being, you know, sidelining the Timmy and Marty sisters. Uh, and know. also, what's her name? The lady who would sometimes look after them. Auntie Shrew. Yeah. It's just... Hmm. Hmm. And look, like Tio said, there was potential in maybe making Martin the villain. You could have potentially have done something with that. And I guess they did, but the execution, oh god. The execution has to be one of the worst face heel turns I have seen in almost any bout of media. 
Martin's evil. He became warped and British. Now voiced by Eric Idle, who, yeah, to give him credit, Eric Idle legit sounds like he is having a blast in this role. He's literally carrying the movie on his shoulders. I cannot, for saving his life, do that. Uh, and I guess the cats who were warped by the science stuff are dead now, too? Even though they were kind of innocent bystanders in the things? Hey, come to think of it, why can these cats talk to the mice and rats, you know, but uh, the cat in the first movie couldn't? Shut up, that's why. <sighs> oh my god. You know- well, good enough for me. You know, I could be watching Ameri <laughs> you know, I could be watching American Tale Five O Goes West. That's a much better sequel to a Don Blue property than this could they ever hope to be. It has a few, Dez, I think. They made three American Tale sequels. Only the second one's good. Which is funny because the first TV, film some the TV show. Yes, which is based uh. off of the environment from the second film. It's funny because the third film tries to throw shade at the second film, only to be much, much worse. <laughs> but I... Hey, Dad, you remember, remember how the first movie was an allegory for immigration and shit like that? Well, yeah. the second movie is a western. Which? Because reasons. Honestly, <laughs> the I'm... the movie the one that tries to... That has the you know the legend of a monster in the sewers, but it turns out to be something as like a community or something. I, I think, seen I think I that's the one, one. Yeah, I distinctly remember one of the CD actor video sequels of any can tell being like that. Yeah, yeah, one of those. But to bring it back to this movie, the animation. Okay, the animation doesn't necessarily start off looking bad, but. I'm sorry, when it's in motion, it can get choppy at times, like, holy cow, I gotta give Nostalgia Critic credit. He edited his review to not show any of the choppiest bits with that animation, but holy cow, seeing the movie in full, just, this is lazy. It's like, honestly, the amazing thing about this film is that this is one of those rare moments where it feels like anything that was done right was done on accident, honestly. Because <laughs> everything just collapses among itself. All right, there's a love story between Timmy and Jenny. We have these little bits of that the abrupt moment where they say, I love you, I love you too, can somehow have any form of meaning. Even though with those moments, I'd argue, it doesn't. And, uh, yeah, there's a pop-out at the end, which is weird. To cap off my thoughts here, it feels like half the time they were treating this like an El Cheapo film, and yet in other cases it seems like they actually were expecting this to be a big hit, so... Like, they even mentioned the craze, but they used the entire orchestra, which is fairly audible. The score is, aside from the musical sequences... This quality itself is very forgettable. And it's like Sherry mentioned, the sound mixing is garbage, yet apparently they had production values on budget here. They were expecting this to be a big hit, even though it wasn't in theaters, and well, I don't even know how well it was marketed, but still, what exactly was the plan here? It's so cheap looking, but everything else suggests that they were putting a lot behind this, because th this movie failing apparently ended up shuttering MGM's animation branch. What was the goal? What was the focus? So it's funny, because the animation also around this time kind of, sort of, started to fall off. Ouch. Yeah. Well, remember, it's, it, by this point, DreamWorks was a thing, so basically, Emblemation was closed down, and most of the, the employees migrated to DreamWorks. Thank you, Mr. I remember Severus Park mentioning that the last thing that they did was that Balto free direct to video sequel, which yeah, is somehow even worse than the second. Yeah, basically, after that, uh, Spielberg relocated all of his staff from that studio into DreamWorks. Well, um, okay, at least they had a place to go, but this. I, yeah, again. It is one of the worst movies I've ever seen, and yet, I can't help but still just be fascinated by it. Like, again, it's amazing. For as amazing as the first movie was, this movie is arguably even more amazing, just in that it is the absolute antithesis of the original. It's like, whereas the original did so much right, the sequel does so much wrong. 
it is very rare you will see a sequel and its predecessor be as yin and yang as the two movies of The Secret of Nim. Tio, a uh, Pedro. Yeah. It's like the, the plot meanders like mad, and as a result, whatever theme of, you know, destiny and shit is completely squandered. The characters are underdeveloped this uh there is even begin to describe it the characters are nothing but just chess pieces being moved around by the writer um like the the like the the female main character in particular at least what what is supposedly the female main character is of course treated like absolute crap the um, the animation is incredibly inconsistent sometimes it looks fine sometimes it's bad it's it's weird the music is terrible the Eric Idol is trying his hardest to make his part good, but it's by this point it's just so insane and it's just like not really it's not gonna save anything. Um the movie as a result is basically a movie about nothing. Like seriously. Like this movie has nothing to nothing interesting in it. Not but really. Pedro, Timmy and Jenny love each other. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool story, bro. Yeah. Um yeah, this is uh, this was terrible, and I don't understand why was this made. I mean, normally these direct video sequels are made to cash in the popularity of a movie, but as we've talked about it, the the the, 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 the original Secret of Nim actually was not a box office success. Well, okay, so... to give it credit, it had blown into a cult classic at that point. So trying to profit off of it with a sequel does make sense. It was one of those, you know, delayed success kind of bouts where, oh, it didn't have the best opening and wasn't initially financially so, successful, but later so on it, it was, became but, such a household name that yeah. So it's like business so it's like Disney's Fantasia where it was a box office flop, but the VHS release was a big success. Mm-hmm. So basically, it was a via. So basically, it's like um, another Don Book movie, sure, actually, because so. the same. Not just that tale. Um, um, All Dogs Go to Heaven. All Dogs Go to Heaven yeah. was released in the same day as Little Mermaid. You can probably uh, guess how that turned out. Um, but uh, it was a big hit on home video. So and because I of guess. that, it was also milked to death. So. And yeah. yet, and yet, I'll give All Dogs Go to Heaven credit. It actually got a franchise that works. I remember seeing only one episode of a TV series where Charlie is a nightmare where everyone turns into cats and he was the worst thing ever. Alright, so... I just recall yeah. the movies being good and it did get a series, though I can't talk on the quality of a series, admittedly. Go on, Pedro. Yeah, but as for this movie, this movie sucks dick. And yeah, don't bother watching it. Watch the original instead. It, and just pretend that this movie does not exist because another big problem with this movie is that it retroactively makes the first movie worse. So just watch the first movie and pretend that the sequel doesn't exist. You'll be better off for it. All yeah. right, so let me conclude. You know... During while watching the movie, I, I started to ponder: Was this potential? Because here we compare this to a direct to video Disney sequel. Was this potentially supposed to be the pilot for a TV series that never came to be? Because there hmm. is the, idea, the hint of a formulaic nature: the idea of teaming arriving in Form Valley and having to do a bunch of stuff there, and ultimately then defeating the the, the actual you know National Institute of Mental Health. You know. Um, so maybe there was on paper the idea of this being a serialized kind of thing instead of being just a movie, which would explain why this is feels like something that should have been bigger and was condensed, you know, to well, one into one movie. Well, too you bad. Know. The secret of Nim is that it's an insane mouse trying to take over the world. I mean, to, like he said. That's probably one of the better parts of the movie. The fact that they pulled you, they pulled the rug under your feet in a way that you won't expect. It's just that there's too much madness going on that the bad quality in general does not make it worth it. Uh, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I did mention the when you commented the first movie that it is my favorite of Don Bluth movies. Uh, you know that it did. Um, so as you can imagine, this hits on a personal level mm -hmm. how horrible it is. Almost nothing in this works the animation doesn't work the music doesn't work the voice acting doesn't work for the most part you know um 
and, and again, both is a sequel and an original story. It doesn't stand up. It just cannot. This is a story that works on paper, but it feels like we're seeing the alpha prototype where they're supposed to, you know, editors and executives telling, yeah, this is a good draft, but we suggest you to add in these pieces here, here, and here, improve the animation, you know, and, um, you know, refine with the, get the real voice actors next time. <laughs> because outside of Eric Kyle and Don DeLuise, everyone else is just not really bringing their A game particularly for the song and speaking of which uh, why did we need the songs in this uh, seriously why because every other Don Bluth property basically had them I thought we we okay, to be fair this was before Titan A but uh, we I thought we had uh, you know established at this point that at least uh, there should have been some kind of consistency between the sequels but no not even that because again when it comes to the Don Bluth, you know, properties, their sequels are tend to give a bad rap to the similar to Swan Princess to the idea of you know fran uh, serializing a franchise and just gives the idea that uh, you shouldn't do it because it leads to start the franchise starvation. When in reality, it's just the simple fact that they're bad products because people either you know don't even care or don't try hard enough. You know, because like I said, with just enough, you know, creativity and, you know, passion behind it, uh, you can make something go on forever. Like, for example, to this day, I still have to find a Ratchet and Clank game that has a really, really bad plot. This thing is the rest of the franchise. Like, sure, you can argue the varying of quality, but at the very least, it generally stays on a particular level. But don't, with, don't, with the Don't Blue movies, like I said, you can count when it came to the sequel only like two or three at tops uh, that are uh, can be legitimately considered good and even so just passing the bare minimum and not reaching the point of uh, their original first movie that the series they are attached you know um so no this is just awful that they're just glad that they never continue this uh, um by the time we're recording this, uh, that uh, new movie that MGM and by extension Amazon is supposed to be making still hasn't even begun in terms of production and considering what's going on in Hollywood currently, it's gonna be a while. Mm -hmm. you know? But to be fair, I don't, I'm not really in a hurry, especially because the reason why things are, you know, are, are going on this way is for a legitimately, you know, good reason. So let the tale continue as long as people can actually get what they deserve, uh, please. Anyway, that's the second GIF, uh, tuning for the third one, uh, which if you have followed what my birthday picks at this point, you kind of would have mm -hmm. to take a wild guess what it could be. Yeah. See ya! See ya! Bye!